Okay, up to this point, we're just taking those indefinite integrals, right? And just saying plus C, plus C, plus C, because we don't know what that C is. Now we have what's called an initial value problem. Initial value problems means figure out the C. That's what this is about. So I'm given this derivative of x squared minus 2x, and I'm told I have the point f of 1 is equal to 1 third. So this is a derivative right now. So I'm given the derivative. That's why notation is so important, and I've hounded you on it. This is an actual function value. So in my original function, I have this point of x, y. My derivative is given with this. Right, so we have to do an antiderivative to get back to the original function. So f of x going back to that original function, and then we're going to do the same thing. Add 1 to this, so that gets me an x cubed. Oh, forgot my equal sign. Then bring that 3 down below, so it's a 1 third. And then again, I'm going to add 1 to this. It's like 1 plus 1 there. So I've got minus 2, and I've got x squared. Bring that down in front, and then plus c. That's a plus sign. Now, clean it up a little bit. So my actual function here is a 1 3rd x cubed minus x squared plus c. Now here's the kicker, right? Here's what we're looking at. This is my y value, this is my x value. So I am solving for c. That's what we wanna to try to figure out. What is that constant and what are we solving for? So f of x is the same thing as y, so I'm plugging it in for this whole thing, and all of my ones are gonna go in for each one of those x's. So here's what we actually have. I've got a 1 third is equal to 1 third times 1 cubed, minus 1 squared plus c. Now the only variable that I have is my c, and that's what we're solving for. So let me squeeze this in a little bit. So it's really 1 third is equal to 1 third minus 1 plus c. All right, so I'm going to subtract 1 third from both sides. 0 is equal to a negative 1 plus c. Then I add that 1, and c is equal to 1. Then always come out that sweet and nice, <laughs> but enjoy it when it does. So c is what I'm plugging in for that. Oops, I'm out of room down there, so let me come over here to the side. So my actual function, my initial function here, I got overexcited about this arrow. I'm going to scoot it over so it's not quite in my way so much. This guy is coming up here, and I now have f of x is equal to a 1 third x cubed minus x squared plus 1, and that is my original function. All right, that's a 1 third. Cool, right? Yeah, initial value. So the moral of the story is you're going to do your antiderivative just like normal, but then you have to, have to, have to be given a point so that you can figure out what the C is. If you're not given a point, then it's just a plus C situation. Okay, let's do one more just so we can practice this and see what's going on. Here I have example 5B. Again, it's an initial value problem. So I'm given the derivative is equal to 1 minus 1 over T squared and F of 1 is 0. As soon as you see this t squared in the denominator, how are you going to rewrite that? Yep, negative exponents. So 1 minus t to the negative 2. Now I can take an antiderivative of that. And t is my variable. So t is a variable we're going to keep there. So that's going to be t minus. Now look at what's happening. When you add 1 to a negative number, this becomes a negative 1, right? So I've got t to the negative 1, and this is 1 over negative 1 is technically what we're doing there because it's that in front. 
and then this is a plus C, of course. So clean it up a little bit. This is negative divided by negative is a positive. So we can rewrite this here as F of T is equal to T plus 1 over T plus C. All right? Now I got to solve for that C. Luckily, dun, 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 we have an X and a Y. So plug that in. So I now have 0 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 plus C. So 0 is equal to 2 plus C. I'm going to squeeze this in. So negative 2 is equal to C. And that, oop, I'm not going to go to that one. Let's go down one more here where we've got it cleaned up. Goes in for that C. So my initial value here is going to be f of, oops, let's go back to black. f of t is equal to t plus 1 over t minus 2, because that's what my constant is. Okay, the only time you do initial value is if you're given a derivative and you're given that point. Otherwise, you can't. Otherwise, it's just a plus c and you go with it. Yay, we're starting our rules of, of anti-derivatives, of our integration. This is amazing. Practice, 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 learn this, love this. Second nature is what this needs to become for you. Okay, great job.